Well, hello there everyone. Um, I hope this finds you well. Andy Spoons here and this one's going to be a slightly different video. I was approached by a company called Kubi Knives um, who create more EDC style knives and they wanted to send me some um, some folding knives to try out and I did let them know, I mean obviously I'm not an EDC channel, I'm not a review channel um, and they let me know, you know, if you like any of the stuff, you can talk about it, you know, do an unboxing, all, all of that kind of stuff. Um, um, I do like this um, kind of thumb flipper, I guess you would call it. Um, again, I'm not an EDC guy, but I like that. Um, this one can live in my pocket for sure. The other thing, uh, just really quickly to make sure that I say right out the bat, check your local laws. I live in Australia, so these kinds of knives you are not allowed to carry out in public. Not allowed to. Feel free to talk about that in the comments in every way that you would like. Um, that's a whole different discussion, but knife laws in Australia are really, really strict. But I do work on site. I do, you know, move around from place to place and keep things in my toolbox, or if I'm working, keep things in my pocket when I'm on a private residence or, or on a work site. So. That one's going to stick around for sure, this one. Um, the reason that I wanted to make this video was less so to kind of do a review of this knife, though thank you so much to Kubi for sending me these. I do really appreciate it. Um, and I will absolutely use, you know, I got these yesterday. I'm going to use this one a lot. Um, and I did say that this one was one that I liked. Um, I did tell them that I wasn't a big fan of the other one personal preference, um, but the reason that I wanted to bring this up is because I wanted to talk about the difference in grind types and which work for green woodworking and why a lot of grind types do not work for green woodworking. So let's talk about that. These have three different grinds. Two of them are fantastic for woodworking, green woodworking. This one not so much. And let's describe why. So first off, let's talk about this Tamarkin custom knife. This is what you would call a Scandi grind on a knife. And what that means is the bevel, if you can see it, I'll see if I can bring it up a little closer. The bevel runs right from that back section all the way to a, a zero point, to an apex. There's no change in the bevel, it's completely flat. And what that means is as you're carving with it, it creates what a planing blade might create. Um, it wants to kind of part the fibers, but it doesn't want to dig into the fibers. It just wants to move them apart because it is, it is a relatively wide bevel see there. Now moving on to my matte white and this is going to be difficult because I've actually started to grind out what is called a hollow grind. Um, the best way to tell if I twist this right I'm probably in the right direction so you can see right down at the end it's polished on the outside edges. Hey honey everything okay? And what that means is the blade itself is like this, and it's um, concave. And there is a high spot on the back end of the blade and right at the very edge. And basically what that means is you're still doing the same thing as a Scandi grind, but with that hollow it makes it a lot easier to sharpen because as soon as you place it down on a stone or on a strop, those two points of contact always want to hit. You can call them rails if you'd like. So there's a rail along the back and a rail along the edge. Um, and that is what you would call a flat over hollow grind because you've got that hollowed out section and then there is a, a kind of a flat over the top. You can imagine it like a valley and then there's kind of a flat piece on either side, a plateau on either side. And there's a flat over hollow. and but for all intents and purposes, a Scandi and a flat over hollow 
really do function in a very similar way when it comes to woodworking. Now we get to what I think most people would be uh, the most familiar with, which would be a flat grind or a saber grind, or the, basically there are a whole bunch of different types of grinds in this, in this realm, in this EDC realm. But what this has, and what most everyday pocket knives have, you can see it's really nice because this is a powder coated blade. Um, you can see the black, and if I show this at a certain angle, you can see there's kind of a bevel that starts way back, but the very edge has what you would call um, as a secondary bevel, or a, um, yeah, a secondary bevel. And that is, it goes flat all the way, and then it just dips right at the very end, right at the very, very end. And what that creates is a lot of strength, because you have a very small amount of edge behind a very wide piece of steel. Um, and it makes it very slicey, because you can get that edge really, really tight. You can really tighten it out. Fantastic for every day. That's the reason that they are created this way, is because you can keep them sharp quickly. Um, it does slicing tasks. It uh, won't want to uh, you know, chip or break in the same way, and if it does, you're only having to regrind the very edge, as opposed to, let's just say you do some real damage on a hollow, a flat over hollow. Um, if that is the case, you basically need to bring this all the way back to the far bevel, the very back end, um, near this, this top section, and then you have to work all the way to the start. You have to, you know, grind out that chip. So, I've talked about the, the three different grinds that, um, the, and there are other grinds of course. Um, I want to do a video um, on axes and those bevels, which are essentially the same, but I think it'll be easier to illustrate when they're on a larger, um, a larger edge, so you'll be able to see that. Getting back to the benefits, so fantastic day-to-day -day edge because you can bring the edge back really easily, um, but the thing with woodworking and why you want a wider bevel or a, a, a deeper bevel I suppose is the best way to describe it so you know where this is just a very very small section of the blade that the bevel comes to what that means is when it enters wood when it enters fibers it wants to dive into the fibers it wants to get into them um, a lot more aggressively because that bevel is so small it wants to kind of dive in a good way to describe that might be, imagine if you are holding um, a book with the pages facing you. If you wanted to, let's just say you have uh, long fingernails and you poked your fingernail into the book leaflet, your finger would part into those uh, pages, specific pages, much quicker. Whereas if I happen to put my hand like this into the, the pages of the book, um, you would probably want to fold more of the pages over. You'd be opening more of the pages than trying to slice through them or get into those individual pages. Um, I hope that makes sense. So a good way to describe this would be, here's, I just carved this uh, not too long ago and you know, I just left that because it looked nice, it felt nice. Um, if I were to carve with my everyday carving knife, um, and again, I'm going to carve towards myself, well not again, but this is something that I talk about um, on my Instagram page and I, I talk about in other carving videos. Um, cutting towards yourself is safe as long as you have the right technique. Elbows together, knife slightly away from you, very aware of the blade. Anyway, um, carving with a Scandi or a flat over hollow style knife, you will see that there's a lot of control and it wants to exit it wants to exit the um, the grain. It wants to kind of pull away from it. It doesn't want to dive in. Um, and it makes it really easy to do those kinds of, you know, these kinds of little curls, uh, finishing cuts and things like that are really nice with a flat over hollow knife. Now, if I wanted to do the same thing with this bevel, this kind of um, secondary bevel, it will want to, and I, you know, I, well, let's see. Let's see if I can. I mean, I think I will be able to, but so it wants to take a much smaller edge and then it 
I could feel it wanting to dive into the wood. That actually came out really nicely. I'm, <laughs> I'm actually really impressed with that. You can see this teeny tiny little curl. Um, bear in mind, I do this a lot. I carve a lot, so my angle, um, my kind of like technique is, is fairly refined at this point. But there is more chance of diving into the wood and taking a lot more. And I have tried to carve with, you know, just general pocket knives. And what ends up happening is you, you dish into the knife, uh, into the spoon or the wood a lot more than you would like to. Turning corners is really hard with a small, small bevel. Because again, what it wants to do is instead of rounding that corner, it wants to, it wants to dive in. So all of that to say, um, I think this is a great knife. Again, thank you, Kube, for sending me this. Um, I don't know if they were expecting me to have this kind of uh, topic brought up, um, but I think it's important to be able to discuss with people who may not work in green woodworking a lot. You know, I've had, I've been sitting around a campfire and somebody's handed me their pocket knife and said, oh, you know, c can, you, can you sharpen this up for me so that I can carve with this? This can be, this can be my carving knife. And having to explain to them that I'll get it really sharp for you, but it's not going to be the carving knife that you're going to be happy to work with all the time. And it is because of that bevel. Um, can you turn a pocket knife into um, a woodworking or a sloyd knife? You can. The issue that comes up is the thickness of the blade. So if you want to open that bevel out and your blade's already really, really narrow, what you end up doing is is grinding into a lot of it. So you imagine that you know, you've got your really narrow blade uh, and you want to open up that angle, you're going to be losing a lot of density before you get to the thick enough section of the blade. So you end up getting a, a pretty crazy looking blade in a lot of ways. Um, that's why they're created the way that they are, the sloyd knives that you have. Um, hope that this little discussion on Scandi grinds, flat over hollow, and a maybe a standard flat grind or um, a secondary bevel has given you some information that um, that yeah you didn't realize that you uh, wanted or maybe you didn't want it <laughs> but you have it now um, thank you so much for watching I do hope this finds you well please consider liking and subscribing and if you have any questions or if you would like me to cover something in more detail um, please let me know in the comments below and I hope this finds you well all the best bye